Hello. 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 And just as the helicopter comes over, uh, here we are. Viewer, we are. We are. Well, it's with... the one that just dropped you off, isn't it? It's, yes, that's right. it's your helicopter. It pulled. It pulled. It pulled up and landed on the on the ancestral um, hobbles helipad. So might might you introduce our, our guest to the? Uh, we are. Well, I mean, a guest who needs no introduction to the to the suave viewer. The viewer is among the best dressed individuals on the planet, and therefore will be a regular customer of yours, Mark Cho of Mark Cho on the internet. Thank you and for having me. The Armory me. and Drake's and thank you for coming. No, it's, it's very brilliant. kind of you. It's a uh, pleasure. Listen, I'm sorry I squashed the Tesla outside with the helicopter. Uh, it's all right. Don't worry yeah. about it. No problem. We need to get rid of that thing anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alongside being an enthusiastic uh, um, collector of uh, and and and, and make a designer of fine clothing, you are a cigar smoker at heart. I am a cigar smoker and at heart. Indeed. Yes. Daily, yeah. daily. 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 It's a daily vice. And we'd, um, we're very it's happy. a good name for a pop-up shop. Mm -hmm. What was the other one? Secondhand Tat. Secondhand Tat. Well, you trademarked that already. Right? <laughs> yeah. That will be a pop-up coming soon to an armory near you. When are you opening the armory Shepherd's Bush, by the way? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You, you'd be amazed how many messages I get about that. Shepherd's Bush. Shepherd's Bush. Come on. I, I'm not amazed. It's, it's, a, it's a question on everybody's lips. You want one in Westfield? That's what we want. <laughs> does, it uh, give, does it give a date on that gold band? Or does it just sorry, say no, it doesn't. But, so this is a Bolivar... What? Is it a, a Corona Gigantes or is it a church or is that the same thing? Uh, the viewer will know, the viewer will know. Maybe it's a Corona Gigantes actually. Uh, but it's, um, I think the House Reserve uh, 99. Well, that's good. Hunter's House Reserve. So we, I've had a few of them. I had those brilliant um, Particus series D number, no, Particus du Connoisseur number three. Which Serie du Connoisseur. Serie du Connoisseur, which were fabulous and they had the gold band on them as well. Oh. Help yourself with um, uh, one of our oh, fine thank you. lighters. We have we have replenished with gas. Yes. Yeah, no, no, do, 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 do. Go ahead, go ahead, thank go you. ahead. So, what tends to be your um, cigar of 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 choice, um, Mark? Uh, you know, I smoke a lot of Davidoffs. Oh, yeah. nice, very Davidoff good, very number good. Two, especially, I'm very keen on those. Good cigar. Yeah, and also the short Perfecto. I really like. Also, that. very good cigar. Yeah. We were debating whether to try some Millennium Blend Robustos on you. Oh. It sent me to sleep. I think that would. They're very powerful. I mean, they they sort of transform from being a mid to mild. With age, they have sort of assumed this ferocity that they never had in their youth. <laughs> yeah, if they come out with that Oscuro wrapper, that black. Uh, what was that wonderful? Wrapper, what was that, the Yamatsa? Mm. That's that's that that'll that'll put me to sleep that would, as well. That would take your head off. I mean, that is that should be no doubt. You smoke that in the morning, Mark, before <laughs> breakfast. It just sort of wake him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why they put the alcohol of tobacco. The, it's the Institute of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, or whatever it is. Mm. Do you ever smoke Dunhill cigars? Not Davidoff's Dunhill. Cigars. I never have. Have you? Mm -hmm. I had a Cuban one for the mm -hmm. first time in Japan. Was it good? It was fabulous, incredible. Or Don Candido. Um, I don't know. It was very sort of anonymous, but it was it was obviously quite an old one because it was mm. when Davidoff still used to make. Oh, sorry, Dunhill used to, still used to make these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That must have been great. It was awesome. It was. Um, I was in Japan to visit this gentleman who bought a watch from me. I had never met him in person, but since yeah. he bought his watch, I felt I should do him the courtesy of at least like meeting up. Was this one of your ones you reached in the auction? Yes, that's right. He bought a fabulous little Patek Two Triple Five, double signed as well. Who was the extra signature by? It was um, Black Star and Gorham, the American. Oh, that's nature. very good. Yeah, because they're quite, they're quite, they were, they were, they're a dis, they were a district, they were a retailer, but quite historic. When did they stop signing the things? It must have been in the fifties, I think. I have no idea, to be honest. That's the only Black Star and Gorham I've ever come across, and it was signed at twelve o'clock mm. above the Patek logo. It's very odd. Are they usually at six o'clock? Yeah, usually. Ah, okay. I Actually, speaking of double signed things. I met a gentleman yesterday who also bought one of my watches from the auction, and he had a Grand Seiko from when Emperor Hirohito had left Japan yes. back in the 70s for the first time. And that was the first time a Japanese emperor had left Japan in, I think, a thousand years, something ridiculous like that. And he had gone around Sweden and the UK and a few other countries, and he had left Grand Seiko watches as gifts for certain people that he visited. And somehow one of these ended up in the hands of this gentleman I met yesterday. God, that's a good thing. And I'll tell you what's especially interesting. Seiko is a very grandiose company, even by Japanese standards. And normally Seiko watches will always have the signature at 12. But these watches, Seiko moved their logo to 6 and put the imperial seal at 12. Mm. I'll show you a photo later. It's an incredible piece. That's what you want, isn't so it's it? Like it's, a, it's, like, it's like a kind of rare version of the Kanjar dial. Mm -hmm. 
Um, or like my favorite, which is the, uh, the Saudi watches, the, the Pateks that bear the image of King Saud, who was my favorite uh, of Saudi kings. He was the one that wore sunglasses and shot very heavily. And they had to depose him because he was spending too much money. Oh, that's unfortunate. No, he was, he was, a, he was a character. But um, uh, yes, but those, those, sound, um, those sound worth having. Well, you know, I know very little about these things. All I want is a Rolex King Midas and I'll be happy. Yes, you like that. That's going to be like a Midas, don't you? Which one? Um, just the classic yellow gold, you know, yellow gold bracelet, heavy, heavy, heavy. The one Elvis wore. That's what you need. Very heavy indeed. That's what you need. That's the only one. Yeah. For me, white gold lapis for that. Would be, oh, well, that would be pretty cool one. as well. That's the one. I mean, I'd be happy with any of them in all honesty. <laughs> well, I was very pleased with my uh, most recent acquisition, which is the rotary. Just a rotary. Um, this is this is the one. This is the one I showed you. This is the one with the, the original 1950s crap between the links. Oh, look yeah. at that. Look at that. See, no, no messing about here. It's vintage crap. Yeah, I vintage crap. You could sell this in secondhand tat very, very easily. <laughs> um, I'm sorry to disappoint you in, in, in such a manner, uh, Lord Father. It's quite shaming, really, to be your father on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> because of the commercialism? Because the no, overt because commercialism? Of the, because, of the because, not because, wearing... because of the 5,000-year-old disease-ridden mm, sort of moss in between the yeah, yeah, links yeah. of that. Yeah, it, it says the man that used to buy suits of fresh off corpses when he was young you know. when i was young but those were the days i'm wearing one you are this wearing no, this one. no doubt was dug out of someone's grave um what do you think of the cigar draws a little restricted but mm -hmm. what can you say it's a late 90s cuban cigars expected um no doubt they'll open up i think this is the point where someone would make this acquisition and immediately uh, return the cigar <laughs> Well, obviously, somebody's never smoked a Cuban cigar before because part of the part of the charm, part of the charm is the plug nature, really. I mean, yeah, the charm, love it. It's fantastic. <laughs> no, no, no. Considering like, how much these things cost, you would have yes, thought they'd roll them. Yes, properly, and this but... is this is the this is the Hunters and Franco House Reserve. Sorry, apparently it's the best. The draw's fantastic. The draw's fantastic. Look, some of the local jeunesse dore outside, just promenading down the broad and broad boulevards and fragrant avenues of Shepherd's Bush. There's nothing like it. It's it's the gay boulevardiers. <laughs> the flanners at their flanning. <laughs> but Mark, I'm just interested to know, can you tell, the, I mean, we of course are informed backwards, forwards, inside out, left and right about your career, but the viewer, let us, let us, end, let us, let us think of the viewer as not understanding the, the, the total history of your business. And maybe you could recount it in maybe, should we say 30 seconds? Oh yeah, sure. 30 seconds would be great. Um, so yes, I, I work in clothing. I love clothing and uh, I have a deep, deep passion for classic clothing and for neckties and for tailored clothing. And uh, somehow or other, I ended up working in this business. But were you, not, were you not a financier before? I was actually in real estate. In Hong Kong? No, in, uh, in, in the far, far east, in China. No. Yeah. God, yeah, you I must have made an absolute fortune. I wouldn't say a fortune, and it was got a little hairy at times, but it was yes. interesting work. <laughs> work for sure. And so, so, so it was but a nat natural step into uh, high-end uh, clothing retail. I tell you, it was actually um, it was a bit of a push too. I was really tired of working with people who wanted to cut every single corner possible because I dealt specifically in distressed real estate in China, and what that means is basically everyone is either a crook or an idiot. And uh, you just hope you don't get shot somewhere along the way. Mm. And, uh, you know, the lovely thing about tailored clothing, as you know, is very few people go into tailored clothing for the money. They really tend to go into it because they just love the whole thing. Yeah. And you meet some wonderful, wonderful characters. And you meet some wonderful clients and you meet some wonderful suppliers and uh, wonderful colleagues and life's great now. You were traveling only this, only this morning. You were, you, were put, you, were, you were doing a triumphal tour of your suppliers in the north. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you took the helicopter down here landed in Hackney to do something to enable you to say you came from the Far East and then flew over London to land it in the Ancestral Hobbles garden grounds, Indeed. ha ha, mm -hmm. um, heliport, golf course, <laughs> shooting range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're, very, we're, 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 we're very happy you've made, <laughs> you've made the journey to... Uh, oh, thank you for having me. It's wonderful. It's an honor. Really. Yeah. Action, they say, but inaction is what we do best. We're back. We're having a nice chat. What have we been talking about? I can't remember. But it was just, it was just, it was just like the best poetry. It sort of enters the mind, excites the spirit, mm. and then exits through the nostrils. We, we, we decided on what we intend to speak about for the second half. Whether we actually speak about it is another question. But I think we we're going to talk about what things I know nothing about. Watches, watches mm. is one of them. 
What were you going to say about watches? Something you were going to say something about watches. Well, you can use watches to tell the time. That's important. Use it to poo poo your poo poo your compatriots. You also, yeah. Yeah. show off show off in the pub. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Keep, keep keep sell them in the pub as well. Keep, keep sell petty, them in the keep pub. Petty thieves in business. Mm. Um, but yours is a, yours is very interesting. I'm very envious of that because it reminds me of the watches that I used to wear as a kid. Except I was wearing the ones first time round that were cased in silver with wire lugs. And they had the same kind of elaborate uh, sort of onion domed hands and, and nice big Arabic lettering. Mm. But um, when they stopped, I would just throw them away because in those days you could buy them for maybe three or four pounds. In silver, no doubt, was in a, silver. a penny a gram. Silver, 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 yeah, yeah, so a, a farthing a kilo. Yeah. It's um, amazing it was back then described. Was it a precious metal back then or a base metal? Or? I think it was a precious metal. I That's mean, but this is serious. England in the 70s when we had nothing. Mm. We would, we just, nobody had any money. All uh-huh. we had was Enoch Powell and um, Anthony Benn, Anthony Wedgworth. Great watch, this. I like this. Yeah, me too. It's beautiful. Nice thing. I and like the, the guys the make this too. The strap is, 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 is fantastic. So what is the one you're bringing out? The viewer, viewer, I have a tip for you, viewer. Head down to your local branch of the Armoury or, or Drake's <laughs> and say that we sent you. The Shepherd's, the Shepherd's Bush Branch. The Shepherd's Bush Branch. <laughs> the inauguration of the Shepherd's Bush Branch. There'll be a limited series of these watches at the opening of the Shepherd's Bush Branch of um, Drake's. It's a, it's a multi-story uh, venue, actually. Yes, absolutely. It's sold based on the scrap value of metal, no doubt. No, and, <laughs> but but tell me, t- t- so tell me what is the what is the? I'm quite interested by what you're doing with them for the because uh, I don't actually know. That's why I mean this is this is totally unrehearsed. For you. This is the kind of as if as if other ones are. <laughs> <laughs> This is the sort of anyway. This is this is this is live broadcasting in a rec- pre-recorded manner. <laughs> um, tell me what you're going to do with them for the shop, and which shop are you doing it at? Drake? We're just doing it at the Hong Kong shop. And what are you doing? We're going to help them sell some watches because all they're bespoke, a nice bunch of guys. All bespoke, or they can be bespoke, but they have some already made. If you'd like to just pick and what up some do they look existing. like? They look like variations of this. It'll always be ladies' pocket watch movements. Sometimes they redecorate it. Sometimes keep it as is. Sometimes if they can preserve the dial in hands, they will. Otherwise, they'll make you a new set of dial in hands, as they did in this case. Mm. And there's all sorts of cases. So there's these sort of squarish Schaefer-style cases. Mm-hmm. But there's also round cases, empire cases, all sorts of things. I yeah. love it. I love it, too. And you know what? They're, they're a very interesting bunch of guys. Because uh, the shop's called... Their shop is called Masa's Pastime. And so Masa Nakajima, who originally was like a salvage diver... And then somehow trained himself to that's restore it, pocket so cool. watches. Yeah, it's so good. in California, both places. But, so it, but yeah. it's so good that you're a salvage diver, and then naturally one sort of segues into kind of pocket watch restoration. Well, you've, I guess you found enough pocket watches at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, 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 I can do this. When you're doing when you're doing salvage diving, don't you have very big gloves? Mm. It's real, hard to wind the crown. That so, way. But I mean, imagine imagine sort of adjusting a balance wheel with a sort of pair of deep sea diving gloves on, and maybe lead boots. Well, oh, you know, maybe because the parts move so slowly underwater. It's, it's ah, ah yeah. yes, I can see. Mm. I can see it now. You see, mm. that's why. That's why you went to Brown University, and I can barely <laughs> read and write. Are they all silver cases, or would you get nine carat cases as well? Uh, you can on request do anything. Mm. Yeah. Anything. I, I would remember. love to do grey gold. You know, grey mm. gold, like just a little bit yellower than normal white that's gold. That's cool. I think it would be fun. Yeah. I, I think I think I think nine carat is vastly underappreciated. I love nine carat. It's so chic, nine carat. It is the cheapest. I like it because it's very English. Before, before viewer, we must p- part from uh, you. That's uh, what's it? Sort of parting is that sweet? Sorry. I can hear Mr. Cho's helicopter arriving. I can, I can. But m- will you tell us how you got into cigar smoking? Um, I was a uh, quite a big whiskey drinker, and someone says, "Oh, you should have a cigar with this," and it kind of stuck. In fact, actually, my whiskey drinking tailed off with my quite right smoking. too quite right too yeah mm. well you know it's you have a cigar at 11 a.m it's a bit weird to have a whiskey at 11 a.m perhaps yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah that's very good and, and you were saying you enjoy mostly davidoff which is very sensible um it's a very sensible number. cigar isn't it no but also very good as well and you'll never go wrong with a with a davidoff and that's what were you saying your your pneumatic drill broke down to, to, to clear out plugs in your Cuban cigar. I say, I say, I say, I always say, viewer, I always say, viewer, I always counsel the viewer to carry a pneumatic drill or chainsaw in case he encounters yeah. an overfilled Havana cigar. But Mr. Cho, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. It's really, really, really good to see you. We didn't discuss our, our um, range of uh, Drake's designed clothing uh, because we are so uncommercial that we don't, really don't know what we're doing. Next time. Yes, because Freddie's got to go. See you soon. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you so much.